I started to teach people about this, about how their fibromyalgia or their chronic migraine headaches or their chronic fatigue symptoms were related to these uh, like sensitized, like neuroplastic pathways in their nervous system. And, uh, and yet I had chronic back pain and tension headaches and insomnia, uh, hip and ankle and shoulder pain. Um, my back would go out three or four times a year. I, I didn't think it applied to me. Um, and it did. It was a couple of years later. It's probably 2015, 16, when I really was, thought, hey, wait a minute, this, this actually applies to me. You're listening to the Nutrition World Podcast, a show about navigating the intricacies of holistic wellness. We're a natural health food store located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we believe that optimal health and peak performance should be accessible to everyone. Hey everyone, I'm Brian Strickland. I'm the producer of the show, and today we have a really great guest with us in the studio, Dr. Matt McClanahan. Matt is an osteopathic physician. He's the founder for Center for Insight Medicine, and Matt has a really unique perspective when it comes to pain and what happens in our body and how to overcome that pain. Ed sits down with Matt today just to talk about what it is exactly that he does and how neuroscience can actually help us overcome pain. So with that being said, we have a ton to cover today. Let's hop into this conversation with Ed and Matt. Hello, Matt. Welcome to Nutrition World's podcast. And today, I'm just thrilled to have you here with me because you're a gentleman, Dr. Matt McClanahan. I've known you for many, many years. I would say... Uh, 10 years probably yeah. and you are going to speak on a topic that is very very close to my heart at this moment has been for many years which is chronic pain and there's going to be a, a a lot of information that people simply are not aware of and in fact personal story I was in uh, had a great friend in New York in about the year 2014 2015 and I'll so remember I've, I had been having some chronic pain, pelvic chronic pain, and that is uh, pretty frustrating because it's not hard to treat. It's very mm -hmm. hard to treat. It doesn't seem to go away <laughs> very easily. Sensitive area. Very sensitive, and it creates a lot of uh, multiple disturbances in your life, mm -hmm. not just the chronic pain. And this friend of mine said, have you ever heard of Dr. John Sarno? And she was quite familiar because she lived in New York. I think mm -hmm. that's where he was. And I had not heard of him, even though I try to be very well read about all this. Well, I'm a seeker. So as soon as I got home, I ordered the book. Didn't have Kindle at that time. So I ordered his book uh, on back pain. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, lights went off in me like almost no book is ever done in mm -hmm. regard to this makes sense. No wonder I'm having pain and no wonder I can't get rid of it. And it was a whole turn uh, for me in regard to my perception of pain. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally have been in and out of pain like some humans as we get older. It just uh, is part, sometimes part of living, not always. And if it wasn't for Sarno's principles, uh, I'm not sure where I would be. And mm -hmm. when I got talking to you years ago, it just blew my mind that you were a student of that philosophy yeah. of, of this whole new way of approaching chronic pain. So I'm going to be quiet a minute and you tell the listeners kind of what's your history, how you got started, and exp and then we'll go into this, this very helpful information of what everyone can utilize to help their chronic pain. Because, and I'll say one last thing, the light going off with this new philosophy helped me at least 50% from nothing else except realizing that I was mistaken about chronic pain. And the real truth of chronic pain, when I read it in his book, it immediately made my pain go down and many times completely went away. Mm -hmm. It was the strangest thing. But now I've dealt with it for so long, I have total trust in it. So welcome, Dr. McClanahan. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, well, I'm really honored to be here. And uh, yeah, I valued our relationship as well. So. Um, happy to talk about this. It's uh, really near and dear to my heart, uh, professionally and personally as well. I've got my own story of, of working with chronic symptoms. So um, yeah, it's odd how uh, reading a book can change your physical experience of pain, right? And what is that? And that's, um, that's something that I really became interested in, uh, maybe early early 2010s, uh, last decade, uh, during my residency, um, I had struggled with a number of different symptoms. They didn't really seem like a big deal to me. 
uh, at the time, I mean, I was getting manual medicine treatments and uh, taking supplements and doing some physical therapy. And I tried some mindfulness and th those were all like moderately successful, you know, kind of helped ease the symptoms. But um, yeah, and I was actually as, a, as an osteopathic physician, um, uh, I took an extra year of fellowship and training for manual medicine, uh, sort, of, sort of like chiropractic in most people's uh, uh, common understanding. And so diagnosing and treating with my hands and um, that was combined with a family medicine residency. And so uh, seeing all kinds of different things, using manual medicine to treat a lot of uh, chronic symptoms, uh, pain being by far the most common. Um, and even in my ma manipulation only clinic, I had a day or two a week of doing that. People wanted to, you know, whether it was back pain or neck pain or chronic headaches or uh, even some digestive issues, these sorts of things, I was treating those um, with my hands. And it was moderately successful, but it was only temporarily. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four days, sometimes a week. Sometimes people would get better after one treatment, and that was great. Um, but it was the people that uh, had persistent symptoms, you know, much longer, three, six months or two, three years, you know, uh, sometimes a decade of, of variable symptoms. And these are the people that wouldn't really get better with manual treatments and they wouldn't get better with physical therapy and they weren't doing really well with even short courses of medications and, um, or acupuncture or supplementation and really frustrating for them and me, uh, as a practitioner. And, uh, it was at, at that time and partway in there that I, uh, encountered a fellow Howard Schubiner, a physician in Detroit. And he'd actually studied under John Sarno. And so my, my introduction to this kind of world, it's really a paradigm shift, uh, was through Dr. Schubiner, um, and not through Dr. Sarno, but uh, shortly, you know, a lot of roads lead to, lead to Dr. Sarno <laughs> at some point. He's been so influential on, on a number of people and really tapping into some things we've known in the body and in the nervous system for a long time. But boy, he really put a lot of meat on the bones and made it very concrete for people. Um, and so his book, Healing Back Pain, which is, I think, what you probably read, was his first major book. Um, uh, and maybe that came out in like 1990, very early 90s. Uh, in the 80s, he was really starting to do this work. And um, yeah, I mean, we can get into it, but that uh, through Dr. Schubiner in his own book and uh, applying that to my own suffering and my own patient care, uh, it's actually patient care first. I started to teach people about this, about how their fibromyalgia or their chronic migraine headaches or their chronic fatigue symptoms were related to these uh, like sensitized, like neuroplastic pathways in their nervous system. And, uh, and yet I had chronic back pain and tension headaches and insomnia, uh, hip and ankle and shoulder pain. Um, my back would go out three or four times a year. I, I didn't think it applied to me. Um, and it did. It was a couple of years later. It's probably 2015, 16, when I really was like, thought, hey, wait a minute, this sexually applies to me. After teaching people about it, um, you know, doctor heal thyself, uh, we kind of joke about, but um, yeah, I needed my own medicine. And once I really uh, understood that in the same way that you did, um, uh, it, I mean, it shifted, it opened things in my life that I never and so thought possible. See if you can bullet point what the powerful shift, what words make that powerful shift? Because it has to do with emotions, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And first though, it has to do with just neuroscience. Mm -hmm. All pain comes from the brain, whether your hands in a fire or you've got fibromyalgia or you have phantom limb sensations or phantom limb pain, all of that is being produced by the brain. And this is where neuroscience in some ways is really caught up to what John Sarno was saying, uh, back in the eighties. But the idea is that, uh, pain is a decision the brain makes and it's an output. It's not an input. And we have no pain receptors in the body. That's kind of a tricky one, right? We've got stretch receptors and thermal receptors and mechanoreceptors and these things, but um, based upon the input of the brain, uh, or excuse me, the input of the body, our perception, and then our experiences, what we've been told, what we've experienced in our past, these sorts of things start to make our brain more sensitized to say, yeah, we should have pain right now. And if you've hit your thumb with a hammer, uh, it, it's probably a good idea to have pain that will protect your thumb from further damage. Um, if you've fallen down a flight of stairs and done some damage or a car crash, right? Um, you've probably done tissue damage. However, in the long term, these acute tissue damage processes heal, I don't know, two, six, 12 weeks. And uh, after that time, like um, their neurological injuries can go a little bit longer uh, at times, but um, really in this short period, certainly three months and certainly six months, um, an injury, whether it's an old high school injury or this car crash, really severe car crash, these things can really heal up. 
Um, and the nervous system in the brain desensitizes and uh, we don't need so much protection because the tissue becomes strong again. And yet so many people develop chronic symptoms, whether it's after an injury or some people wake up with it one day or it just kind of creeps in there with no injury uh, identifiable in the past. And, um, and then it's there and it's there for months and it's there for years. And the purpose of the brain to do this is a protection purpose, Absolutely. right? Pain is okay. a danger signal right. from the brain to protect you when it's concluded that uh, you know, danger in the body to the tissues is greater than safety. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, though. There's numerous parts of our lives, right? Anything that can, can lead to this kind of threat response inside of us, whether that's a global pandemic, or that's uh, uh, not being able to make your mortgage payment, or that's um, a manipulative spouse or parent early in life. Like a past, present, and personality is a way that uh, some of us talk about how these... Um, external and sometimes internal threats, you know, as it comes to like a perfectionist and really hard driven personality, uh, people pleasing, kind of poor boundaries. These cause an internal kind of smoldering threat that we can't stand up for ourselves and assert our boundaries or that we need to be all things to all people all the time. Or um, I certainly have all of these. It served me very well in medical school and residency, but that served as actually an internal form of pressure, right? Sometimes these threats come in the present with kids and whether it's sick kids or uh, having vaccine debates or, uh, you know, watching the news, you know, there's, there's a lot of things, but especially the stuff that within our families, uh, whether it's family of origin or current family that really starts to stress us out. This is where stress comes into this. And certainly some people have been through some very stressful experiences in their past. Um, some people not as much. There's there's abuse and there's neglect and uh, some certain things, but um, it's a, considered a major childhood trauma for your parents to have been divorced, or for a, one of your parents to have had a mental illness, like just simple depression. Mm -hmm. That affects how your your whole protection system uh, uh, views how it's safe. So past, present, and personality often are these ways to sensitize the system. And when we get sensitized, we're getting sensitized to threats in our life. Our nervous system kind of turns up the volume. Our vigilance, we start to worry about more things. We start to pressure ourselves to be a little bit, we're a little bit more critical, uh, settle less for, uh, you know, average work, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but sometimes we're always moving the goalposts in our life. And at other times, we really have this um, self-doubt, you know, um, about ourselves or about uh, our vocation in life or about our decisions. All of this creates this internal threat response. And as the threat goes up, we need danger signals to protect us. We have this fight, flight, and freeze part of our autonomic nervous system you've heard about, and I know you've talked about, and you and I have before. And this is what really starts to sensitize the system, and it can actually amplify or perpetuate or even it sometimes cause physical pain because pain is always from the brain. Doesn't mean it's imagined. Doesn't mean you're making it up or being dramatic, okay? All pain comes from, your, your hunger comes from the brain. Fatigue comes from the brain, right? Joy comes from the brain and anger and all these emotions Physical feelings and emotional feelings all come from the brain, and they're designed to protect us. Um, but sometimes they can get sort of out of calibration, um, or sometimes they can just get amplified to the point where all we start to feel is even physical pain, but that physical pain is not being caused by tissue damage as much anymore. And that's the thing. In all of medicine, we're looking for cause. We can treat symptoms with opiates. How's that worked out for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you can treat symptoms with a whole host of supplements. I'm sure you have people that are on a bucket of supplements and what they actually need is to understand it's no, it's this and this. And you need these two supplements to really help. You don't need 20 because you read 20 different articles that said 20 different things. We really need to drill down to the cause of this. Um, and that's why I think you're such a good clinician and why doctors who really focus on causes of these things um, get to the cause of chronic pain. Um, which is often not just the body. And and this is a, as people would guess, a very rare conversation that a person could even have with a healthcare practitioner, professional, because they're, they're not exposed to this, so right. they have no idea. But can I say, and you tell me if this is correct, so chronic pain, because I've I've had, and I'm dealing with it right now, I have mm. some, one is it moves around. One thing that Sarno, Dr. Sarno says is if it moves around, it's obviously not a broken body. Mm -hmm. And so part of the reason that it keeps creating pain in me is because there's a level of emotions that's probably or is more painful for me to look at or deal with than my hip hurting. Right. And so this hip hurting is diffusing or uh, 
direct, redirecting me into something other than my true journey spiritually in life would be to look down in the dark well, mm -hmm. but that's so scary that it's creating my hip pain. Yeah. Now, one thing that I know uh, from reading his book, uh, the back book, is when he said pain moves, mine always has moved. Mm -hmm. I mean, yesterday my right hip hurt, today my left hip hurts, and the day before my right buttock hurt. Well, it's just classic. It's called TMS, isn't mm -hmm. it? What he named that? What's yep. that stand for? Tension myoneural syndrome. That essentially tension in the mind and in the emotions, in the heart and the soul, right? H have a reflection through this, the muscles and the nerves and the other uh, systems of the body. Again, through this autonomic nervous system, which balances and protects us, right? Yes, fight or flight, but it also is, is what runs your digestive system and it runs your hormonal system. It's very implicated in your immune system. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it has little tentacles, uh, neural tentacles basically that help regulate your blood pressure and how much your eyes are dilated or constricted if you're sweating or not, right? But it also goes deeply down into this perception, right, of, of threat, which is often run by neurochemicals, cortisol, adrenaline. Mm -hmm. These sorts of things are, are here to protect us, but they can, get, they can get turned on and we're not built to be in stress all the time. Stress is a tear down process, mobilize blood sugar and fat, res fat reserves. Let's crank up the juice with adrenaline and cortisol. And all of this stuff like really starts to um, process in our nervous system as a, in a way that um, we can't always be tearing down. We have to move back to this rest, digest, repair, right? Fight, flight, freeze, rest, digest, repair. Uh, but certain personality types, et cetera, et cetera, this makes for um, this persistent threat. Because if um, we're constantly vigilant, uh, something negative is going to happen because we're not meant to be living on the, uh, the the scary place 24 hours a day that a tiger or a snake correct. or something or bankruptcy is right on our shoulders. And so the body does, in its intuitive wisdom, is actually trying to help us in its own right. way. But if it's creating this chronic, chronic pain and we keep looking for answers, we keep thinking we're kind of a victim and we're looking for someone to fix us, mm -hmm. that's a dead end road to me because the body's not broken. Uh, we have this mind, mind uh, activity going on that we have to right. maybe look in a different place than what we have been looking in. It's odd with me because this, this chronic pain uh, I know is emotionally triggered Maybe it's emotionally caused, but I know it's also emotionally has to be dealt with for me to really get better because mm -hmm. I can get very good even. And just because I know Sarno's principles and you and, and all the things that we believe in, it doesn't mean that it takes all your pain away. But what it's done for me is it gives me peace of mind. I also now know how to manage it mm -hmm. quite well. And I'm and there's days it's not too good, but I'm far better than I was. And the other thing is pain medication does not help me. I don't care if it's prescription pain meds. Mm -hmm. That's another sign that it's yeah. it's more from the brain because it's it's there, there's nothing wrong with my hip. I've had it looked at. It's fine, uh, but it's telling me that there's work that needs to be done. Yeah, and and you know the his documentary called All the Rage. If you mm -hmm. type in uh, YouTube, John Sarno, All the Rage, it's four minute, five minute little documentary. He very well explains about when he's talking to patients what what we're talking about what so you see patients mm -hmm. in regard to chronic pain you have a, a clinic here in town you've been yeah. doing it three years yeah. and um uh, here actually at nutrition world mm -hmm. uh, so how does that go for you what what's a protocol with a patient yeah yeah i will clarify one thing so all the rage is actually a, an hour and a half documentary it's a feature exactly length. yes I there's, did. A, there's a trailer you. you can rent it through youtube mm -hmm. i did but that. you can also go on amazon prime and, and stream it i you know 4.99 or something like that yep. but uh fantastic the trailer is good enough on its own but um yeah so the the, the question is actually like um if we treat the cause, I mean, there are people that get cured of this. You know, there are some that have been able to manage their pain in a new way, but like cure is possible sometimes, especially if this is just TMS. Uh, another way of uh, talking about it is calling PPD, psychophysiologic disorders, or mind body syndromes, MBS. These are all uh, different names for the same thing, okay? Some people call these central sensitization syndromes. That's probably the most academic term. And that's getting it diagnosed is really important, right? Um, I'll often say to uh, new consults, you know, if you had eight out of 10 pain, right, in your abdomen, for example, and you were convinced it was gas, or you weren't sure it was pancreatic cancer, right, which one's worse? Well, well technically, the experience of them is that they're the same. They're both eight out of 10. But one certainly has much more ominous, you know, meaning to you. And you're not sure. And you're kind of like, oh, shoot. And 
maybe I need to get to the gastroenterologist and get the MRI and get the biopsy. And if you just need to like go find some Beano, that's a whole <laughs> different thing. This is eight out of 10, but I know exactly what it is and I can take care of this. That's safe. Those are safe thoughts. This is like, I know what this is. I can do this versus uh, dire and doom and uh, uncertainty um, activates all that threat ma machinery that we have. And I want to um, interject. I know, and, and, and I know that you will say probably the same thing. Yeah. I could completely agree. Once we have some chronic pain, we got to rule out that there isn't a brokenness yes. to our system of some sort. The issue is, and I've dealt with this too, because I can, I know I've always been tend to be a hypochondriac. I'm modest, not terrible because I deal with so many sick people. And, you know, mm -hmm. I know all the stories of medical school people, mm -hmm. you know, they end up having every disease in the book once they start studying it at first. Well, I certainly have had every disease in the book too, temporarily. Uh, but, Mm -hmm. When you when when you have a chronic pain and you keep going to different practitioners, they're actually going to reaffirm the fact that you do have some problems because you go to a chiropractor, your spine's out of alignment. You go to the physical therapist, you need to do some physical work. Yes, your I, core is weak. I, yeah, core is weak. I mean, I've been through about eight different people and they all had their special ideas and they're good people with caring hearts. But I, if you totally believe in and intake all that information you tend to go back to that broken body yes. philosophy so then you keep looking for the fix and that does distract you from the, the real fix. cure the physical fix that keeps you from doing the real fix which is dr sarno's principles of tms yeah. and and dr mcclanahan yeah. um yeah. so does that sound like right no that sounds right and, and part of a new patient consultation is really reviewing the lab work we want to rule out tissue damage like fractures and, uh, you know, acute compressive issues, um, whether that's nerves or, or, or bones or muscles or whatever, um, infections, cancers, right, autoimmunity. These things can really do active and ongoing tissue damage. Um, that's the tricky part is, is, well, that's maybe not that tricky. That's, we rule that out with labs and imaging. And this is what the medical system is, is really designed well for, the Western medical system that looks for problems and addresses them. Now, when people don't get better, that's, that's another thing altogether, and that's where we're getting to. But when people just start to see some degenerative change on an x-ray or an MRI on their spine or their knees or their shoulders or hips, right? That's normal age-related change. I've got some, I'm 41 and I've got some grays in my beard. You've got a few more in your hair. I don't have as much hair as you. Like these are normal age related changes. And, but this is what we're told by numerous different practitioners, uh, surgeons at times, or doctors who just don't understand 40%, excuse me, 50% of 40 year olds with no back pain have disc bulges. Really? Yes. And no pain. So disc bulges without pain. It's something like 68% of 40 year olds with no back pain have degenerative changes at one or more levels of the spine. And this, this just marches right on up from 20 to whatever, 100, like the levels go up and up and up of degenerative changes, of disc bulges, of compressions, of herniations, this sort of thing. We see the facet joint narrowing for the, the nerve spaces. And this is just sort of gray hair of the spine. Oh, I love that. Right? And so it, it's not the cause of chronic pain. I can tell you that. Now, if you've got a lot of arthritis and, you've got, and it's mainly right-sided back pain, but you've also got right-sided foot drop, Right? And that get, con get, gets confirmed on, on a uh, nerve conduction study. That's a different issue, right? So we've got some tissue damage and we've got a compressive lesion on maybe the L5 nerve root on the right and that causes this foot drop. Okay, well, we need to go get that addressed. Surgery is great for that. But actually, there's something like a 25% success rate for low back surgeries, even these decompressive surgeries and fusions for, for just the indication of chronic pain along with degenerative change. It's really awful. And so... Uh, and surgery in and of itself can lead to complications. People can rarely die on the table or have anesthesia, anesthesia reactions that can cause, in some cases, some post like fusion low back syndromes in and of themselves. And so surgery and just a structural approach is n never the only solution. We always want to look 360 degrees. We want to consider like, yeah, this is a danger signal coming from your brain, this pain signal, that doesn't mean you don't need tissues addressed. But like, once you can start to say, well, actually, only I really have this degenerative changes. And, you know, I've got five different diagnoses from my PT to my acupuncturist to my nutritionist to my, uh, you know, Pilates instructor. Um, and uh, my pain moves. Well, st structural pain doesn't move. Right. If you've got a bad knee and you're bone on bone, which sometimes that can cause uh, a pain experience in people, it's pretty it's pretty routine and it's pretty predictable. And it's it's usually always there. A broken bone hurts like every step until it's healed. It doesn't move to the left. 
right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't vary with the time of day or your period, for example, or just like something non unrelated like dairy or gluten intake. I'm not saying dairy and gluten aren't important sometimes, but when we start to have pain that is some, becomes like on the right, but then it becomes symmetrical, mm -hmm. or now it involves the entire right side of the body, or it uh, kind of gets better on the weekends, but it's worse at work, right? Or it gets better on vacation, mm -hmm. or it's just worse on the holidays, or it's sometimes anniversaries, anniversaries of birthdays, death days, these sorts of things, or when your mother-in-law comes to town. I have a great mother-in-law, but like, you know, uh, there are times when these sorts of things start to act as triggers, or they're just inconsistent from the standpoint of what a structural lesion would do. Um, or they get coupled with other things. I've got low back pain, but I've also got anxiety. And I've got, uh, I get migraine headaches. Or I've got fibromyalgia, and I also don't sleep. And um, maybe I said that already. And I have depression. And I'm on depression meds, or it's you know I've got irritable bowel syndrome and uh, and this kind of uh, variable uh, hip pain. Hip so pain, if, hip so pain if, was one of my so things. if people appreciate what you're just saying for their own body and life, it's a big sign and signal that it's time to look somewhere else. Exactly. And so what? And I know we're going to wind up uh, run out of time here. What is what would be your advice for their next step? One is people who are here and want to come see you, yeah. if possible. Two, mm -hmm. what would the person who can't do that is, what would be your next step? First step is if you have doubt about this being a structural thing and you have not done due diligence, mm -hmm. you know, um, you might still need that MRI to really help you to understand. I mean, it, it, to take this approach is, is one that is, is somewhat counterintuitive. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like my back pain is uh, this neuroplastic pathway. Right? It doesn't feel like that there are stress and emotions in my back. It feels like my structures hurt. When somebody presses on the muscles, it hurts, but it also feels better after a while. You know, it's it feels structural. None, none of this, I have patients say, no, this isn't that, that mind stuff, doc. This is real pain. Yeah. There's no such thing as real or fake pain, right? Is it structurally caused or is it caused by the nervous system? Well, that's a different question, mm -hmm. right? I might be hungry and whether I need calories or I'm stress eating, right? Or I saw a commercial while I was watching the football game and I'm just kind of mindlessly doing this thing. Those are all real sensations of hunger. It's just one is more equally, you know, closely calibrated to this need for calories. And the other one is a need for comfort, which we're good, you know, we're good for comfort food in the South. So part of this is really getting, drilling down towards the cause, ruling out these things. If you need an autoimmune panel done, I don't think most people need these huge batteries of toxin tests and, um, and ruling out uh, all kinds of, you know, mold overgrowth or mm -hmm. testing every last little thing about uh, in, in your sensitivities. These can be helpful sometimes, but in my experience, um, the sensitive part is the nervous system, not just the gut or not just the uh, uh, overgrowth of this or that thing or too much cadmium in your hair. Um, I'm not saying those aren't helpful for some people, but like um, most people, when they've exhausted a few options, exhausted the PT route and exhausted some medications, and they're on a pretty reasonable supplement regimen. So start con considering this, but also just like you said, do your symptoms vary? Do they move around? Are they, uh, are they triggered by certain things, whether that's food or weather fronts or, you know, times of the day or month? Um, do they get like, uh, are they not leading to like weight loss and night sweats, right? If you're having blood coming out of your in your urine or your stool, well, that's that's not actually an organic change, right? Versus this chronic abdominal pain. Somebody told you it's no big deal, but you still have blood in your stool. You need to get that evaluated, right? But when we can start looking at this other stuff, like, oh, by the way, I did have this like these migraines or uh, chronic abdominal pain as a kid, and no one ever figured out what was going on. Or yeah, but there was this time in my 20s where I had horrible anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, for a time. And, and now you have whatever, chronic low back pain or neck pain or thoracic back pain. We're starting to put this together. These things run in packs, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue, interstitial cystitis, uh, these chronic pain syndromes, fibromyalgia, like I said, chronic pelvic pain is one. Uh, it can be pain with intercourse or really awful periods for women. It can be prostatitis. It can be diagnosed as prostatitis for men, uh, difficulty sitting. Um, these sorts of things like run in packs together. And then we can also look and say, man, did you have, uh, was it stressful in your life when these symptoms started? You know, was there anything going on? Or was it stressful in your past, right? Did you have a pretty chaotic childhood? You moved a lot, or uh, dad was an alcoholic, or mom had really high and low, highs and lows, tempers, or depressed episodes. And it really caused you as a kid to start on a neurological level, uh, detecting threat kind of everywhere. And building a protection for from that threat. Yeah. And the... 
you know, I know with my history, uh, actually my pain went away within one day of reading the book, the uh, uh, Healing Back Pain by Dr. Mm -hmm. Sarno. Mm -hmm. Now, w did it stay gone forever? No, it didn't. But I know for a fact that my shoving the emotions down instead of dealing with them is what created creates the recurrence of my pain. Uh, again, so what are emotions for? To protect us. Protection. Yeah. And when you shove your protection down, what are you doing? You're you're sort of like one invalidating your system on one hand, but like you're reducing the brain's capacity to alert you to danger. Mm -hmm. So it will amplify something else. Right. And so it sort of amplifies all these physical symptoms and you get fixated on these physical symptoms and other things. This, the psychology of this is really fascinating and how it connects to the neurology and the immunology and the endocrinology. All of this is, is related through this autonomic part of the nervous system. And you're, you're right on with this. And this is in a consultation. I mean, we're really looking for, is this structurally caused these symptoms, whether it's fatigue or pain or, you know, anxiety, or is there a, a neuroplastic part of the brain that is kind of amplified? And once we start down that route, we really want to start to identify what are the inputs to, of fear to the system. If you think every time you move that your discs are going to flip out between your spine like a tiddlywink, like that's going to make it very hard for you to like want to move, to feel confident in your body. You know, that's, that's a danger signal. It moves the system over towards danger. Every time you move and every, every morning you wake up dreading getting out of bed and until you get in that first 10 minute hot shower for your body to get moving. This is often a neuroplastic process. Okay. And when you put all the facts together, not exactly a tissue thing and uh, this variable and triggered and man, yeah, I did have a pretty stressful childhood or I can't, you know, I'm a real perfectionist or I've got all kinds of self-doubt. These personality, past, present and personality start to point towards stress. You start to put this together and we can start to desensitize then the nervous system. We decrease the inputs of fear, worry and pressure and doubt, right? And we can also increase the inputs of safety, mindfulness, awareness, self-compassion, right? A uh, gentle graded exercise, a growth mindset, these sorts of things add all kinds of like, um, knowledge is safe. Knowledge is power, we say. Powerlessness versus power, right? And so as we start to develop power and different kind of connection to ourselves and others and a meaning, we make meaning out of this pain. Like, oh, wait, I can see why this is happening. There you go. I right? love that. This is not a, a matter of like blind faith. It's a matter of understanding the literature. Two studies came out within the last three weeks that like approve of this. One of them is in JAMA Psychiatry. It's on what's called pain reprocessing therapy. And it has to do with like understanding a little bit of the neuroscience of pain. You don't have to be some nerdy neuroscientist to do this, but to, to understand that like these signals coming in from the body are no longer dangerous. Or we can re, we can change our pervasive uh, perception of this. Right? Well, uh, what unbelievable points. And I know for myself, and I'm always constantly reading and, and on YouTube with uh, people like yourself who help me to be further educated on mm -hmm. these principles. Dr. Sarno says uh, he's got, I think, a list of 12 uh, uh, kind of uh, recommendations for life. One of yeah. those is mm -hmm. go back to exercise. Don't think that you're broken and you can't do things. Yeah. Well, to do that, you have to have, you have to move into the place, or I have that, I say two things to myself. I am not broken mm -hmm. and I am safe. And I have to keep telling myself that when the pain goes Beautiful. up because the lack of safety always makes me have more pain and then not feeling secure and feeling that I am broken keeps me from doing anything, which then feeds the pain more or feeds the fear more. Feeds the fear. Yes. And that just that yeah. gets me in this spiraling cycle uh, that is, it, it's a doom and gloom cycle. There's right. no doubt. I have um, learned so much from chronic pain and I try to look at mm -hmm. life's challenges as teachers. And this has been a wonderful teacher. That's one reason you're on here because I want to help people to know there's hope. Uh, there's hope more than opiates. There's hope more yeah. than just hanging on to the side of your bed every morning and yeah. barely moving because you might break more. And again, ruling right. out the medical stuff first is important, but then you kind of almost have to quit going to those people because you're going to keep getting diagnosis that you're broken. That's not what we need because then we won't feel safe again. So we have to do some self-work. And for you, so you see patients here in mm -hmm. Chattanooga. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of the clinic? My practice is called the Center for Insight Medicine. Okay. You can go to centerforinsightmedicine.com. I just redid my website. It's got links to like all kinds of videos, books on the subject. I've got healing back pain uh, li linked right into Amazon there. Um, there are a few like national groups 
that do this. Uh, one is called the PPD Association, Psychophysiologic Disorders. They're actually having a conference later this week online, if you really get into this. I don't know if this will be released in time for that, but um, ppdassociation.org has all kinds of links, a questionnaire. Uh, it's got links to practitioners in different states. Oh, good. So you can look through nationally to see if your state's on there and then where these practitioners that un really understand how the brain works. And uh, it's not just this fragility tissue damage model only, right? We really need to incorporate this bigger neurological and psychological connection. Another one is called TMS. That's what you said, tension mild neural syndrome, TMS wiki, like Wikipedia, TMS, W-I-K-I dot O-R-G, okay. has all kinds of other videos, links to uh, uh, self-directed uh, programs to take yourself through, to really understand one, uh, why do I hurt? Uh, what is this TMS thing? And then what do I do about it? Um, and then as you progress through that, again, there's another practitioner directory, um, links to books. Uh, um, there are coaches and psychologists and PTs and physicians all over the country and even the world now doing this. It's not a majority of us for sure, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, tmswiki.org, ppdassociation.org, centerforinsightmedicine.com is my website. These will all be really invaluable to people just to go explore right? Read a John Sarno book. Healing Back Pain is on Audible. I listen to a lot of books these days. His best book, in my opinion, is called The Divided Mind. Yes, it is. I love that book. There's a book called uh, When the Body Says No by a guy named Gabor Mate, um, uh, who is on there, and a brand new book that just came out called The Way Out by Alan Gordon. This, this is actually based off that uh, research in JAMA Psychiatry that I mentioned. Um, and it came from a uh, a study out at uh, uh, University of Colorado Boulder working on pain reprocessing therapy. It's just a new way of talking about TMS work uh, in a sense, but it, it really is fundamentally changing our relationship to fear. I love that. You know, Dr. McCann, this, I mean, this is life-saving stuff. And that's yeah. one reason we work so hard to uh, empower people through these podcasts and through information, because the normal traditional pathways are they kind of have medical inertia going mm -hmm. on. That what they've done in the past is what they're going to do in the future. They're not going to break out of this mold very easily. You've just empowered people with all of your website information because, again, knowledge and reading is the key to this. You can't expect someone else to, to, to do the work for you, mm -hmm. but it's not that difficult. I went through years of no pain from the first time I read his book, uh, but life is life. And, you know, I went through divorce and I went through this and I got relationship issues mm -hmm. and, 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 and we all do. You're it's not being. just me, but being able to learn better how to process the emotional stress that comes with that, which will happen if we're breathing human beings, mm -hmm. uh, is the key to me controlling my chronic pain. And so, um, you know, I, uh, I know it's watching, I think the documentary you talked about with Sarno, I think I saw him with a couple of patients and mm -hmm. at the end of his visit, he would all tell, always tell p people or his patients now go live your life. And yeah. I love that now go live your life. And I have to remind myself sometimes of that, Hey, it's time to just go live my life. Mm -hmm. There isn't a finish line there that I'm going to get to. Right. It's every day is my life. This is all I have. And this chronic pain, hey, it's okay. It's it's okay to not be okay sometimes. It, it, if it's disabling, then I have to work harder. But uh, So I'm just thrilled you're here in Chattanooga, thrilled yeah. that you were here yeah, yeah. To, to expose people to this. Your credibility is just uh, the top of the game. So thank you for joining us on well, Nutrition World's podcast. Thanks for having me. And uh, I appreciate everything you're doing with Nutrition World. But um, the things you said today are just right on. And your own experience, I know, is informing that. And so Oh, yeah. If if I, anybody would, if I would leave everybody with something, it's just, you're probably not as fragile as you feel. Like, yeah. Right. Um, and uh, just be curious, like curiosity and fear are, are uh, you can't really have both at the same time. Like one is, is, is more dominant and the more curious we can be about our symptoms, curiosity that might direct you to a website or a book, curiosity that might just uh, help you to question your symptoms, right? Move from that pancreatic cancer to gas. Like, wait, what if this was gas? Um, it, it can change everything. It can change your nervous system to start uh, to, to a more safe place. And uh, that can change everything. So uh, stay curious. All right. Thank you so much for your wisdom, Dr. McClanahan. Thank everyone for listening to Nutrition World's podcast. Now go live your life. Go live your life. I love it. Thank you.